Welcome to our fifth tutorial, or fifth video in our series of making a GUI hangman program using Python and PyQt. Okay, so so far we have made our data store, we've made our user interface, and we've got the controller to the point where it or it loads up the actual program and it has it all initiated, um, initialized, and then we can click on the quit button and we click on the new um, word button and they act. So now we're to the point we need to start working on the actual letter buttons. So what do I want the letter button to do? Now if we go back to, um, this will do, we want the letter button, when it's clicked, we want to check the letter and see if it's actually in the word. Then we either reveal a letter in the um, in the guest words. Um, if that reveal is empty, then we can actually, if it's not empty, if there's no empty characters left, we can display a win. Um, we also then need to check the letter, and if it's not there, then we increase the hangman, and again, if there's no hangman left, then that's a, a loss. Um, so you can see all the, all the actual actions and the processes and the logic of this particular program happens from the event of hitting a letter, a letter button. So what do we want it to do? When we click on the button, we want it to do a few things. We want it to disable the click button because that way it prevents a person from using the same letter over and over and over again. It's a nice little easy way of solving that problem. We want to check if the letters in the world and then appropriately want to update the state of the game. Now, we've got 26 letter buttons on the keyboard there. That means I have to make 26 functions for each letter. That's a bit excessive and it's repeating yourself. And the whole dry principle, do not repeat yourself. Well, what can we do there? Instead of just make, instead of what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make one function. But what I'm gonna do is when a button's clicked, I'm gonna pass the object, that button object, into the function. So then that function can then do calculations with that actual button itself and call methods on that button so let's see how that goes um, hopefully it'll make a lot more sense when we get around to actually creating it so first off I need to go up to my signals and we're just going to create one I'm just going to create it for the letter A and we'll work down from there because once we've done it with A we can then use it for all the other letters quite simply so in my signals I need to pick up the signal that the letter button A has been clicked so I'm just going to say here I'm going to say letter buttons, right, self dot UI dot, um, and this is going to be, what, oh, where did I, uh-oh, not anywhere there, okay, cool, um, UI dot and A button is the one that I want, then go, go, if, if it's clicked, if it's clicked, um, and then I want it to connect to, and I want it to connect to self, and I'm just going to call this one letter uh, button. Radio, and then I want to pass self dot ui dot a underscore button. So I actually want to pass the button itself there. Now remember I set up here that you don't put the open and close brackets on the function that you've called. Otherwise it will run when you first when you first run the signals um, method. So we've done this here. So we've got a problem with that. Now I'm going to give you a workaround that's used um, and it's introducing a concept that is really beyond the scope of what we do. Um, and feel free to look it up. But I'm actually going to change this into its own little function by using what's called lambda. Radio. So by putting that in front there, I can now call this function and then pass a value. I said, if you want to understand about lambda, I'll give you some material about that in, in class. But um, that's a, a fairly advanced concept that we don't really need to worry about. So I've now got a um, I've got a signal sitting there waiting for when the A button is clicked. So what I wanted to do, so I've got to make this function letter button so i'm going to come down here under the new word button i'm going to come down in my slots section and i'm going to go define i'm going to make the letter button make sure i've got self in there and then i'm going to again save you pain by copying and pasting my previous work there we are disables the click button 
checks if the letter is in the word, and then checks the word for a state of the game. Radio. So, I've also got to put up here, not just self, I've got to put comma button, because that is the value that's being passed in that there. That object, the A button, is going to get passed in and be represented by this. And we're going to say now, I need to get the letter. This is all this is going to do at the moment. The first step is getting the letter. So it's going to guess. So the guess variable equals button dot text dot lower. Right here, button dot text dot lower. And I'm just going to print that to terminal because I want to test and see if it works. So let's run it and see if that works. I come up to here, check in my terminal, I press A. Hey, A's come up. Awesome. Click, 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 click. Awesome. So I now know that works. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of that testing. You could have actually just put a, a break in here and we could have just done a debugging, but that's a simple way of running it. Actually, I'm going to leave that print in there for a bit later on. So what's the next thing I want to do? I, I've now got the letter. I now want to um, go through and I want to... Disable the button. I'm going to deal with all the checking later on because that's a lot of a bit more complicated logic. So I'm just going to disable that button. Disable that particular letter that's put in. And how I do that is I'm referring to button because that's the one that was passed in. Radio, and I'm going to use set enabled false. Right, well, what does that mean? Set enabled false. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to... Yep, it's just, it just turned it off. So that is a function, uh, that is a method that happens for all buttons in PyQt, and, or actually all widgets, and you can just say it's not enabled. It's being set to false, and it's going to become blanked out. So if I run that, you can go A, and look at that. And if I keep clicking it, no more A's are popping up, only one. If I go, right, so, let's go quit. And I have done that little bit of code. So there we are. So that's basically the first part of it. It's actually getting the letter in um, and making sure that it actually um, does click and does work. So the next little step here, we're going to sit there and see and now make it actually check. So I've disabled the button. I'm going to check if the letter is in the word. So let's go down here again. We are still in our letter button because this is in response to the button being pressed. And I'm going to say check. Um, check if letter is in, in word. Right. So, I'm going to, again, cut and paste. Actually, no. Um, yes, there we are. So, check if letters in the world. So, let's have a step through this. So, first off, it says, if guess. So, guess is, again, the value that we've got off the letter, the button that's been passed here. So, in this case, it's A. So, if guess is now A. So, if A is in self.word, which is what we've defined back up here in the main program and that we've created our guest word, right? So if A is in that word, then it's successful. So add a guest word, add guest to the guest word. So what we need to do is go through the actual, um, go through the list and replace any of the underscores with what um, where, the, where there is an A, we need to replace the underscore with an A. So how do we do that? Well, we use a for loop. And we use this funky thing called enumerate, um, which has two things. First of what it does, it does the usual program that you would do for a for loop. So for letter in word. So it goes through each letter in word, which is a list, and goes for that first letter, I'm going to do this. For the second letter, I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to do another thing. So second letter, I'm going to do the same thing. Third letter, I'm going to do sex. I'm going to iterate over each letter. But what enumerate also does, it also gives us an index. So when it gets to the first letter, it's going to be index zero and give us the letter value as well. So if the word was dog, then it would say for, for zero, letter would be D. Um, it then checks if the guess is D. Radio. 
So let's have a look and see what happens here. So I've said if guess, which is A, let's say instead of the word dog, let's say dag, that might make it, or dad. Radio. So it comes through and says if guess, which is A, is equal to letter. So index zero, letter is D, because that's the first one in dad. If guess, which is A, is equal to letter, it's not equal to, to the letter because the letter's D. It just skips that, comes back up. Index one, letter is A. If A equals to A, it does. So then it comes in and it says, right, guessed word, which I had before, guessed word, well, the index, which is index one, the second letter, I want to change it to whatever guess was, in this case, and give her that to upper letters. Okay, so then it'll actually put it in there, it'll pop up, and then it'll do the third one, index two, letter is D, if guess equals letter, it doesn't, so I'll skip here, it will then display the guesses, it'll run that function again, so it's updated and hasn't got what was there previously. Okay. The other one, the other option of the other branch in that logic was if the guest letter is not in self.word, well, that's a miss. So we need to increase misses by one. So misses equals misses plus one. That's what that shortcut means there, remember? It's the same as saying self.misses equals self.misses plus one. It's a nice little shortcut. And then once I've done that, I need to display the gallows again and update the gallows because the value has gone up once. So. Let's see if that works. I'm going to run that and come here and let's see. I'm going to try A. Yep. Oh, look, it's A there. It works. Okay. That's, I'm going to have to quit and do that again. Let's try again. A. No, A didn't work. Um, I'm going to new word. Oh, okay. New word. No, that doesn't work. So close here. Play again. Just making sure it works. A. All right. I mean, through that way. A, no, three that way. Yep, yeah, okay. So it works both ways. So I'm getting the A to respond, and I'm also getting the gallows to, to progress when I need it to. So there we are. We have now got to the point where we have checked the letters. We have got those working. While we're at it, let's put in the last bit here, which we're just going to check for the end of game conditions, which are part of these two components here. So what we need to do is, um, actually no, we're going to do that in the next lesson. So, um, there we are, we've got letter A working, we've got an Instagram, and we're again checking whether it's actually in the word and revealing the word letter if it is in the word, and we've also got it showing, um, increasing the um, hangman if it's not in the word. So, that's the end of this tutorial, and we'll see you in the next one.